Hey, greetings everyone. I'm going to take a new project today and I thought I'd document it just in case it uh, might help someone else out in the future. What we're looking at now is just a little work table that I built. That tabletop is an old coffee table. I'm just going to take it and cut it into little pieces and throw it on the uh, burn pile, but I stopped and thought to make a nice uh, little work table. So we should put miter saws on top of it. <clears throat> so I used some old scrap 2x4s and built it with some legs and uh, that's what you're looking at right now. The saw on top of there, right at this current uh, time, is the uh, Harbor Freight 12 inch uh, miter saw, the one that bellows to both the left and the right side. I'll do a review on that later, but what I've done is I've bolted that down to the table. There's four holes in the base, and just drilled some holes through the table and put some bolts on. This thing does tend to move around, especially with the uh, sliding aspect of the saw, and you don't want it tipping over on you while you're trying to cut. On occasion, I might want to move this around to some project site, like uh, another part of the house or another part of the yard. And the way it is, you'd have to unbolt that saw and move the saw and then come back and get the table later. And that takes quite a bit of time. So what I thought I might do is I might put some wheels up on the one side of this table, basically like a, a two-wheeled cart. So when I move it, I'll just pick up the one end and I can roll the table with the saw around with a lot of ease. And that's what I'm going to do with this project. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I have a little mock-up here of what uh, it's going to look like to put these wheels onto this wooden table we created for the uh, miter saws. We're going to use these 10-inch solid rubber wheels from Harbor Freight. This particular item number here is 35459. And uh, yes, they do have that horrible smell which comes with a lot of Harbor Freight items, but Fret not, I was just at our local hardware store looking at some wheels down there and they have that same exact odor, so it's not unique to Harbor Freight. In any regards, these are very heavy and they have ball bearings, so that you should be able to support that table and the weight pretty easily. The diameter of this shaft is 5 eighths of an inch. And what I've done is basically create a little mock-up here of what's going to look like once we mount it on to our, uh, one of our, two of our four legs on this table. If this is one of the legs, what we're going to do is basically come through with this 5 8 inch of a bolt, and it's 5 inches long. We have uh, four 5 8 inch washers, and we're going to use one of these nylon lock nuts so it doesn't uh, move on us. This is just a little spacer, and I created this out of a piece of uh, scrap PEX, a 3 quarter inch PEX I had left over. PEX is just the new uh, flexible pump plumbing tubing. You can cut it pretty easily with these cutters. And just happen to have a scrap laying around. If you don't have any PEX, you could probably use any 3 quarter inch pipe, maybe a piece of copper, or even a PVC. If not, maybe your local hardware store will cut you off an inch or two and give it to you for next to nothing. You only need 5 eighths of an inch on uh, each side. So basically what we're going to do here is I put this wheel so that it's essentially got a few inches below the bottom of the leg. I just essentially made it roughly uh, equivalent to where the rubber meets the, uh, meets the wheel itself. And you need to drill a 5 8 inch hole in your leg, you want this to be precise because if you have too much slop in there, the wheel's going to wobble around. You want to try to make sure it's uh, square to the piece of wood as well. You could either use uh, these wood bores. I use this particular one in the drill press just so I made sure that it was perfectly square, the hole square to the piece of wood. And you want to make sure that your holes are in exactly the same place from the bottom of the leg on both sides, otherwise your table is going to lean and be lopsided. But once you've drilled your holes in your table legs, this will be the inside of the table on the left here. Insert your bolt with one washer through here. Put another washer on the inside. Then we're going to put our spacer another washer, and our wheel goes on. The way our wheel goes on, you notice that it's more concave on the one side than the other. We're going to make the concave side, which is normal with the inside of the wheel, we're going to make that on the outside. Otherwise, we'd have to use a longer bolt. 
this is a five inch now. If you did it uh, with a normal side, you practically with a six inch bolt. So we put that on there. Then we put the last washer on. And finally our locking nut. Both the nut and the head of the hex head of the bolt use a 15 16 inch wrench. You're just going to want to snug this up so that your wheel has enough play to roll freely, yet it's not too sloppy. Right now we can see that's, uh, that's pretty good. There's no slop in there. And the end of our bolt is just about at the very end inside edge of that uh, nut, which is a good, good thing. Just one last thing to note, since we put these wheels on the one end of our table, essentially this end of the table is now going to be this much higher, the distance from the end of the 2x4 to the ground. So what we can do is one of two things. We could, on the other side of our table, extend the legs down by this much to bring the table up. But if we want to keep the table the same height, what we'd have to do is on this side take and cut this much off of the leg and then measure up and put our bolt through for our wheel. So essentially lower the side of the uh, table where the wheels are going to go. I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. When I get out and actually implement these on the table itself, I'll show you how I do it. Okay, here's our work table flipped up on the side. We're going to go ahead and put these 10 inch wheels in this end here. On both sides we can basically make this uh, table easy to move around when we want to do some work. And I showed you earlier made this little mock-up down in the shop how it's going to work. This will be the uh, leg. So basically we're going to have to take and cut this down by a certain amount, drill a hole for basically our axle using this 5 8 by 10 or 5 8 by uh, 5 inch bolt. And we should have ourselves a nice uh, portable table after we do that. So Let's get started. I want to think we're also going to take this cross piece here. Let's just have it be a surface butt mat. We're going to take and notch it down and set it in here so it's a little more uh, a little more stable than it is right now since we're using big saws up on top. Kill two birds with one stone. All right, let's get going. Okay, the table is laying on the side, and this is the uh, front right leg. We're going to put the two wheels on the right side. I measured the radius of the wheel, so from the very outer edge here until the center of the axle is 4 inches and 7 eighths. So if we were to drill the axle hole dead center here, 4 and 7 eighths up and centered on this 2 by 4 this wheel should be, in theory, the bottom of the wheel exactly flush with the bottom of the 2 by 4 And that will allow the table to be level, the same height as it is now. Now, of course, if your 2x4 is the same level as your wheel, you can't. your wheel's not going to spin. So we need to take off a couple inches off the bottom so the wheel will turn. I'm just going to take 2 inches off of here. And then I want to repeat the uh, same process on the other side. So let's go ahead and we'll drill our hole first. As so we know, we're going to be using these 5 8 inch bolts since it's a 5 8 inch shaft for the axle and that wheel. And I've got a 5 8 inch wood bore mounted on this uh, Makita drill. So let's go ahead and just drill that hole through here. Try to make it as accurate as possible. You want it to be perpendicular so your axle is going to fit straight. don't want any play in there so just then just double check here's our 5 8 inch by 5 bolt and that should fit right through there okay good so let's go ahead and we'll get the saw and we'll take this 2 inch piece off of here okay we're ready to take this piece off we're going to use our square here so it gives us a nice straight edge just so we got a nice clean cut on here it's not critical but just good craftsmanship Now 
There we go. Now that wheel should have some room to spin. So let's go ahead and assemble this first wheel. This bolt's going to feed up from the inside. We've got a washer. washer here. We've got our little 5 8 inch uh, spacer that we cut using that 3 quarter inch PEX tubing we had left over. And then one more washer. And then we need to find the wheel. And as we noted before this wheel has a more concave side which is normally the inside. We're going to use that for the outside just so we don't have to use as long a bolt. And then we'll put on the last washer here. And of course the uh, nylon locking nut. Give me a wrench, snug that down. These use 15 16 on both the nut and the uh, hex head bolt. We just want this tight enough so that the wheel doesn't have any wobble in it and doesn't but yet spins freely. At least free enough for our application here. So that looks pretty good. We're not going to be doing any uh, downhill races with this. So there's one side. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll do the other side. Okay, we've got the uh, table flipped over, and we're looking at the uh, right rear side. Did the same thing as the front, measured up four and seven eighths, and we should probably double check that. Measure twice, cut once. Sure, sure enough. And we're going to take off two inches off the bottom, just so the wheel can turn. So once again, make sure you get this right on the mark, so your wheels are at the same height on both sides and the table's not lopsided. We don't want that hole any bigger than we need it to be, so just back your drill right out of there. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, notch these braces into this 2x4 so it's a little more stable. So I'm going to have to take this back off anyway. And taking that back off will let me get that uh, speed square on here so I make a nice clean cut. So let me find my uh, drill screwdriver and I'll get this out and be right back. Okay, we got that back brace off. Had some screws on the inside. And I go ahead and cut this two inch piece off the bottom here so that the uh, wheel can spin freely. Once again, these are T squares, a uh, straight edge. Okay, our wheel go right on there, but before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the notches for these so I don't want the wheel in the way. I actually have to take the wheel off. I just put on down there to do that. So let's go ahead and get uh, repositioned and get that going. I went ahead and notched this one leg for our cross support. I had marked uh, where the cross support was at before I unscrewed it, just, just to be a butt joint. And I used the uh, portable circular saw to cut this out. We set the depth of the saw so it's exactly the thickness of this uh, 2x4. So this, um, this is going to be a pretty snug fit, which is the way we want it. If this is loose, we're not going to get the strength out of it that we're looking for. So I'm going to have to tap this in place when we're ready. We'll go ahead and do the other side now, and I'll show you exactly how I made this happen. Okay, this is the rear right leg, and I have scribed where the uh, 2x4 goes across here. did that before I removed it. And to make this notch, as we mentioned before, we already set the circular saw so that the depth is the exact thickness of that 2x4. Now I'm going to use my speed square and make sure we get a uh, straight line on this first cut. I'm 
going to keep making notches until we eventually get this whole thing clear to the wood. And one thing you want to make sure you do is put your eye protection on, which I didn't. Since I got some sawdust in my eye, I'm going to go back and do that. And keep going here. start to break out of there pretty easily. There's some high spots in here. So I have to go back and clean out the saw. Okay, we're getting close to the end. We want to, as we get to approach this line, we want to make sure we don't make this too wide. As I said before, if this is too loose, we're going to lose the strength we're looking for. So I'll get it close to that line. I'm going to go ahead and fit that piece of wood in here to make sure it's not, uh, not too much. Looks like if we just cut to the exact inside of that line, it'd probably be a good snug fit. So I'm gonna get my speed square again. Help us make a nice accurate cut there. Just another hair. A little bit at a time, don't want to go too much. You can always take more off, you can't add it back on. See how that looks. Looks to me like that's perfect. It's going to be nice and snug, so we'll go ahead and pound it in with a hammer when we're ready. Okay, I had to put a little elbow grease into this. I took these screws, got them out of the way, took a block of wood on top of here, and gave it some support from underneath and gave it a couple good whacks. You can see how nice and tight that thing fits. That's going to give us very sturdy. I can tell just now how much sturdy that was before. We'll put our two screws back on each side to hold it there. And uh, we'll put our wheels on. And we can flip this over and do the uh, other side. Our trusty hand, Harbor Freight half inch hammer drill we bought. Put those screws all the way down until I get this back brace on that way and put some weight on it. Right now, I don't want to uh, put too much downward force over that having these braces on. Okay, let's step back and I'll uh, put the wheels on this. Hey, so we're looking at the finished product. 
when I was uh, recording the final process, the battery in the camera died, so while the battery was recharging, I just went ahead and finished it. I'd already showed you all the key points anyway, so nothing lost there. As you can see, we have uh, the two wheels on the right side, and the standard wooden legs on the left. And the uh, miter saw is bolted down using 3 8 inch bolts. So now if I need to move out to, like, to the driveway to do a big project, I just got to pick the one end up and wheel it just like a cart. All in one, no need to take the saw off and uh, move things independently. Nice little, uh, nice little project. It took me about, uh, I don't know, two hours or so. The wheels are uh, pretty rigid. Actually, the table is even more sturdy than it was before. As we know, we took those side braces there. They're just a butt joint on top, and we notched them into the wood. They have a nice tight fit. And that really helps things. And we had to take the back brace and move that up a little bit higher so we had some clearance for the wheels there. But I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, no major complaints. It does have just a little bit of movement. You can see in the wheel there. That's because there's no brace in the front. I wanted to keep that open so I can slide things in and out of there, so I'm more than uh, willing to live with that and very minor issue. I'd say the cost overall, of course, this tabletop was going to be thrown away, so that was recycled there. And when I built the table probably a year or so ago, I believe the 2x4s were left over for some other project, so technically there's no cost there. Now the wheels were... I believe about $7.30 a piece from Harbor Freight. And then, believe it or not, almost almost $10 for those two 5 8 bolts, eight washers, and two uh, nylon stop nuts. Almost the same cost as the wheels. And then we have the four 3 8 inch bolts up on top to hold that saw down, so probably another $2 there. So what are we talking Fourteen fifty, twenty-five dollars, about uh, twenty-seven dollars. Not bad. All right. Hope this gives you some ideas. Hope you enjoy it. Cheers. Oh, one uh, one post cheers note here. I was using this Harbor Freight. This is the half-inch hammer drill, eighteen-volt battery-operated. I did a review on it the other day. This is the first real application I've had it. I was using it to uh, take the screws in and out of this table here. It kind of came upon a disturbing problem. I had to put a lot of weight into some of those screws to back them out. And when I was doing that, it went into like a hammer drill mode. It started hammering. And I double checked the uh, setting up here and it was definitely not in the hammer drill, hammer drill mode. So I don't know what that's all about. And I just couldn't get it to go away. And it was also happening when I was driving screws in. So a little bit disappointed. That's a definitely uh, major issue for this drill. Like I say, it's relatively brand new. I'm not sure what's going on there. But uh, one more thing to watch out if you're thinking about buying this drill. It's not looking good for the little guy. Alright, here we go for sure. Cheers.